Hello, Nick. Thank you for sending in your videos to FixYourGame.com. This is PGA professional Brant Kasbaum speaking. I do see a couple of things in your swing that I'd like to take a look at. And starting with the video over here on the left side of the screen, I want to talk about the width of your stance. Overall, you do have a very good athletic balanced posture, but your stance is a bit too wide, and this is limiting the amount of rotation that you can generate and the amount of speed that you can generate in your swing. And when you look at the golf posture, uh, it's very similar to other athletic postures that you see in a, a number of other sports, whether it's a, a defensive position in baseball, a shortstop's position, or leading off a of first base, or a linebacker stance in football, or somebody getting ready to return a serve in tennis, or a linebacker stance in football. In all of these positions, you'll see that the, the athlete has their feet about shoulder width apart or just wider than shoulder width because that's where they, their, the human body has the most mobility, the most balanced, and is, and is in the most athletic position. And you can see that you're quite a bit beyond shoulder width in stance here. You're probably a good foot or so between your uh, both sides, uh, a good 12 inches outside of shoulder width. And that's really limiting the amount of rotation that you can have in your swing and, and therefore is limiting the, uh, the speed that you can generate in your swing. This is me over here on the right-hand side of the swing, and this is a driver that I'm hitting back in, from uh, October of this year before the snow started to fly here in Wisconsin. And you can see that my feet are just outside of shoulder width, and that's a good rule of thumb for all clubs because that's where it gives us the most balance and the most flexibility. And there's a snowball effect in the golf swing, so if there's a, some fundamentals that are uh, not solid or if there's some flaws in the core fundamentals, and we see that it snowballs and creates bigger problems as the as the swing unfolds. And so, and that's what I see a lot of in, in your swing here, Nick. The uh, the the overly wide stance is limiting your flexibility and limiting the amount that you can rotate, and it's causing some other problems in your swing. So once we get this fixed, I think some of the other things that uh, that you're having issues with in your swing will fall into line. So now after we talk about this, you can, we're going to talk about your shoulder rotation, which you've mentioned is something that you're working on trying to increase the, the rotation of your shoulders. And the wide stance makes it harder to transfer your weight just because your feet are so far apart. It's difficult to transfer your weight to your right side and then again to your left without sliding or losing your balance. So let's measure your shoulder rotation. We're going to pause it up here at the top of the swing. You can see right there, we're going to measure your shoulder rotation. And you can see a bit of your right shoulder here at the top of your swing. So from this face-on angle, that shows that uh, the rotation is a little, uh, leaves something to be desired. Because a, a good full rotation would have hidden your shoulder behind your head, or even you could see it over here on a, on a rotation beyond 90 degrees. So if I draw a line here to your right shoulder and then to your left, you can see that your shoulder rotation is about 75 degrees, 68 to 70 degrees. And we'll take a look over here at the right-hand side of the screen and see where the rotation comes in. I'll advance it just a little bit more here. And you can see that my, you can see my right shoulder here at the top of your swing. So that'll show that I'm a bit beyond 90 degrees, just over 100 degrees in the shoulder rotation. So that makes it the width of your stance is making it tough for you to rotate and get a good weight transfer. The other thing I notice in your swing is you're very, what we would call stacked, um, meaning that your weight is left at the top of your swing. I don't know if that's intentional on your part, but I do think in, in your case it is really limiting the, uh, the power in your swing. I'm not one of those people that is 100% on board with the stack and tilt method, nor am I 100% against it. I do think it does work um, for a number of people, but I don't think it, it works for all people. So I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of solidly on the fence when it comes to the stack and tilt swing. But in your case, I do think that having your weight tilted to the left at the top of your swing is seriously limiting the uh, uh, rotation and the amount of speed that you're, that you're generating in your swing. So I would like to see you narrow your stance a little bit 
and that would in turn allow you to make a better rotation. And as we go forward in the swing, it will allow you to make a better hip rotation and put you into a much more solid or strong position at impact. So we're going to advance your swing here a little bit more, and we're going to stop it right before impact. And you can see here, looking at your hips, I'm going to back it up a frame or two here. You can see your hips are pointed in this direction, slightly ahead of the ball, whereas in a, in a lot of uh, more powerful swings, you'll see that right before impact, the hips have cleared. Let me back that up a little bit. I'm one frame too early. And you can see that in here, my hips have cleared and are pointed well out in front of the ball. So my hips are open to my target, whereas with your swing, your hips are pointed at the ball or are square to your target. And we can also notice this here in the other angle from the down the line angle. You can see here, this is at impact. You can see the ball is just taken off. And you can see that your hips are pretty square to your target line and not open. If your hips were open, I would be able to see both of your back pockets here. Um, but uh, your hips are square, so I can see, I can even see your front and hip pocket there. This stacked position or this leaned left position at the top of your swing also causes you to come up and out of your posture a little bit as you swing the club through. This line here on the left shows your spine angle here at impact, and this line on the right is your spine angle at address. So as you bring the club to the ball, you're coming up and out of your posture a little bit, which is uh, leads to a degree of inconsistency because that's a moving part in the golf swing. Ideally, we want our posture to remain as constant as possible uh, during the swing. And with your lower body, you do that. So that's very good that your posture stays constant with your lower body. But because you're kind of stacked or leaned left at the top of your swing, there's really no room for you to swing your hands or arms through. So you have to come up and out of it a little bit in order for you to make contact at the uh, at impact. So those are a couple of things that I'd like to have you work on in your swing. Uh, please look at the written part of the analysis that's included along with this. And I've attached some links to some YouTube videos that I've got that, uh, that you may have already seen that will demonstrate some drills that will help with this. But I do think that the wide stance is a cause of a lot of these other issues that we see in, in your swing. Narrow your stance a little bit. Work on getting your, your shoulder turned over, your left shoulder over your right foot at the top of your swing. And that will help you to make a more consistent, powerful swing. If there are any questions, please email us at info at fixyourgame.com. Thanks, Nick. Have a great day.